Hello, hello, hello. Hello, Simon. Hello, Flo. Hello, Nick and Spenny. Hello, everybody, and welcome. Welcome to this uh, special live stream. Uh, so, yeah, a little bit of backstory about it because it's, you know, it's something special. Uh, a couple of days ago, uh, we started uh, a new compilation album collab on the Magpie Pirates Discord server. And uh, this collab uh, was uh, based on no input techniques. It's based on no input techniques. So I decided why not to go live on the Magpie Pirates channel and share with the community a couple of these techniques and a couple of ideas and sounds that can be sampled after the live stream or that can be used by someone else or you know you can take inspiration from what I do today. So yeah, I thought it was a nice idea to do it and uh, yeah. The intro music was very lovely indeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. The intro music was uh, taken from one of my works. Um, uh, and, you know, it's glockenspiel and metal uh, instruments. Instruments made by metal. The album is called uh, Alterations in Metal Structures. Okay. <laughs> Let's stop with the self-promotion and let's talk a little bit about uh, no input music and no input mixing techniques um, <laughs> so 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 um, no input mixing techniques um, here i have a couple of uh, instruments mm, the main one is the mixer here that you can see then there is a phaser and uh, a filter. Uh, so these three pieces of uh, gear uh, will be our starting point for creating a no input uh, mixing and uh, no input music setup. Um, let's create at first um, a patch on the mixer because it's the easiest thing to do. Let's connect uh, one of the outputs of the mixer. For example, one of the auxiliary outputs that are usually used for monitoring. And let's send it back to one of the channels of the mixer, like for example, the first one. And let's see what happens. Now we are feeding the signal from the output to the channel and back into the the channel so yeah let me turn off a couple of effects <laughs> uh, this one okay so here we created a tone and we can uh, change the pitch of this tone by using the EQ knobs of the mixer. So as you can hear, we can create uh, many different type of uh, things and sounds uh, even with just uh, one channel that goes in feedback in itself so for example we can create a single tone a single note but even some rhythms this is something rhythmical that can be used The mixer is uh, working on its own in this moment, so the feedback is going uh, into the circuit and creating all these different type of uh, sounds.
Yeah, the master fader is really low. I'm sending the signal out from the mixer from the master. So yeah, I can turn everything up uh, at the highest uh, level. So for example, the gain here, I don't know if you can see it maybe with the other, yeah, with the other camera, you can see it. the gain is at the maximum level, the fader is at maximum level and I'm sending all the signal back to the auxiliary output at the maximum level. But of course, the main one is my control source and I can use it, uh, you know, to create uh, the right level, the right output level. Because of course, no input music is very loud uh, because we are speaking about feedback and feedback is loud uh, for nature, for its nature. So yeah, this is uh, just the first example of uh, a way to create uh, some sounds uh, with no input techniques, but it's not the only one. There are many different type of uh, no input uh, sound sources um, and most of them works with the idea of uh, using feedback as a sound source. So for example, I'm moving to the pedal, the phaser that I have here. And uh, the phaser is as basically a resonance that can be turned all the way up and that can result in sound if you ping the pedal with the, for example, a sequencer like this one. So now I'm going to, to ping the phaser with the resonance at the maximum level and see what happens. So here the, the pedal is uh, an instrument even if it's an effect basically and it's what it was not uh, meant to be used in this way but it works uh, as a sound source uh, let's change a little bit of settings just to see you know <laughs> how it sounds So yeah, you can create all of sort of, you know, percussion sounds, uh, very liquid, uh, very bubbly. <laughs> uh, let me check the chat, obviously. I'm here also to answer to your questions. Mm, this works with digital mixers as well, or only with analog mixers? Uh, well, this is a good question because uh, I've never tried doing uh, no input mixing techniques with uh, digital mixers. But I think it works, probably. Uh, so yeah, it should work. Basically, they are the same. Obviously, the internal routing of the mixer is made in a different way. But um, I don't know if they have like some sort of uh, internal uh, protection for this kind of things. Uh, I don't think so. So yeah, probably you can do it uh, also with a digital mixer. Um, of course, if you are, I've never broke any mixer that I played with no input, in, no input mixing techniques, obviously. Um, so yeah, you can try also with your digital one, but of course, be careful if you are scared about, uh, you know, something broke here and there, because of course you are dealing with the huge uh, levels and, uh, you know, the, the mixer in itself is not made to work in this way. It's made for other purposes. Um, so yeah, if you are scared about it, uh, I suggest you to, you know, to find a very cheap, uh, like a Behringer mixer, like this one, uh, or even a smaller one and try with that before to not, uh, you know, to not damage your expensive equipment. Um, yeah, analog is preferable. Yeah, I totally agree with uh, Nick. So, 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 then another example of um, 
using uh, something in a different way and creating sounds uh, from an effect can be applied to this filter here. So a filter has a resonance and the resonance can go in self-oscillation. So we can create uh, sounds from, I think that this is, uh, you know, used as, as an effect and there's no input. So let's start with, the okay, it's a little bit high in volume. So here is just a filter that it's self-resonating. If you are into synthesis, etc., you know this thing, uh, obviously, from uh, previous stuff. But yeah, it's still interesting. This one has also some interesting features. So you can, for example, send a gate CV signal to it. So you can sequence something, like, for example, in this case. So yeah, you can create something interesting with the, just the filter that it's self-resonating and you can, you know, use other type of controls to make it sounds uh, interesting. Then we can go back to the no input mixer and we can try to create another feedback loop inside of the mixer. Uh, and we can also add an effect inside of the feedback loop chain. So for example, here I have a, a delay that can be used for this purpose. And uh, we are going to input. So we're going to send another auxiliary output to the effect and then the output of the effect to another channel in our mixer. The pedal is on. Volume is really low and that's one of the things that can happen with the you know, input mixing techniques. They are always a little bit surprising. So yeah, we can create interesting sounds. Also inserting another piece in the chain. Sounds like FM synthesis, basically. And probably it's a sort of. Because the signal is modulating itself. And that's another, you know, another thing that you can do. Um, yeah, then of course you can try different type of no input techniques. Uh, in this moment, we tried uh, with uh, you know electronic ones, but you can also do it with the uh, acoustic signal. So, for example, one of the simplest way that you can do is using uh, an amplifier or a speaker and the mic to create feedback. And I have an example here behind my back here. I have this um, this amplifier, and uh, I'm gonna try to you know to create some acoustic feedback with it. Probably it will be loud, so don't be scared. Uh, probably the camera is not helping us, obviously.
and this is another example of how you can create feedback and uh, you know create music with the no sound sources basically <laughs> yeah my cats uh, probably are a little bit scared of the sounds but you know they are in another room so <laughs> that's fine i don't have dogs uh, so <laughs> that's better anyway anyway okay so these are a couple of examples of how you can create feedback and how you can use uh, your devices in a different way from what they are supposed to be used and uh, i found this thing very fascinating in general because uh, you know having the possibility to create new sounds from something that is uh, unexpected to do it like for example a mixer which seems like something very very passive in a certain way uh, that it's used you know to mix other signals but it's super interesting to you know to be able to create sound from something that it's not supposed to do it so yeah and also from example from self resonating filters from phasers there are many many different ways for example self oscillating delays can be a really good sound source for this kind of things. Uh, so yeah, these are just a couple of examples. Of course, if you have questions, just write them in the chat. I will try to answer, you know, during this live stream. And of course, I'm also available on the Magpie Pirates Discord server to answer to all your questions. Just go to the no input uh, uh, channel there. And uh, yeah, let's try to create a no input patch uh, so we can listen to some uh, examples uh, of no input music created with a mixing desk in this case and with a phaser and a filter and a couple of effects here and there you can also for example well this is another thing that you can do uh, you can send the cv signal into the effect into the feedback chain to change it mm, it doesn't work as of course uh, you know one volt per octave uh, oscillator but of course you can manipulate the, the signal of the feedback also with CV. So this is another option that you have. So, so let's create a patch and let's try to see what we can create with it. I'm using these cables that are usually very cheap uh, for jack per side. And I can create many different patches because of course a mixer has uh, a lot of outputs probably more outputs than inputs so you know you have the auxiliary outputs the phone output uh, the alternative outputs in this case of this mixer you have the two track out etc 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 the main outputs etc so let's create a patch and uh, let's see what happens uh, first of all i'm gonna i think i'm gonna connect uh, the alternative outputs of this model of mixer. Into channels and I'm feeding the signal back, obviously, from those two channels. Let's send the signal here. You can see probably, well, not from that camera, but you will see that uh, there are lights blinking there and the levels are very high. So here you have another tone that you can change with your volume knobs or EQs. And of course, the mixer starts to sing. <laughs> so, to answer to Felix's question, uh, how do you mix the signals from the mixer and the pedals to be at the same volume? Like it is possible to make a feedback sound like a drone with the other pedals as the melody? 
Yes, it is. Uh, for example, in this case, I'm using uh, another mixer as an actual mixer to send the signal back to my sound card and my computer. So I'm mixing all the different signals from the different instruments uh, with this mixer here. So yeah, the phaser has a volume, a channel for the volume, the, the, the filter as one, and also the mixer as one. Um, I created a very weird routing for this mixer uh, when I was uh, preparing this uh, live stream a couple of days ago. And uh, I connected the one of the main outputs, uh, the left one, to this effect here, which is an harmonizer. So I'm adding uh, more effects uh, after the feedback chain to create more variety and more, you know, more stuff going on um, from just one single sound source. So for example, I have this mixer, this uh, feedback here, but I, I have also the same feedback that is passing through an effect. So I can combine them to create uh, a more interesting sound. So of course the possibilities of, uh, of connections are very wide. You can create really a modular setup like in this case. This is really a modular setup. Um, so yeah, you can use uh, many different type of effects uh, into the feedback chain, after the, effect, the feedback chain. You can use effects like sound sources. There are, you know, infinite possibilities. Uh, mixers uh, are really interesting because they have a lot of, uh, you know, inputs and outputs and internal routings, uh, um, ways of, you know, manipulating the signal and sending it uh, where you want. So there are, you know, there are a lot of possibilities. Uh, in this case... Uh We can add also, for example, uh, a reverb after the signal. We can filter one of the two channels that I'm sending out from the mixer. So this one, for example, passes also through the filter. So I can use the filter both as a sound source and also as an effect at the same time. You know. And we can create a rhythm, for example, sequencing, uh, sending some gate signal to the filter. So yeah, as you heard, uh, there are many, many, many different possibilities. And um, yeah, maybe I should play something and try to create um, a on-the-spot composition, an improvised composition. Um, working with no-input mixing techniques uh, is very different from working with uh, other electronic instruments um, in this case, because of course um, the the mixer in itself, as I said in the beginning, it's not supposed to do what I'm doing with it. And uh, of course, the interface of the instrument, I consider it as an actual instrument, the interface, uh, the interface is, um, you know, it's weird because uh, 
if you turn a knob, it's not uh, necessary that the result, the sound result is the same every time because the feedback changes, changes uh, every time that you, you know, move a fader or press a button or turn a knob. So obviously there are um, a certain degree of unpredictability in this type of sound sources. And um, yeah, of course you have to deal with, uh, with that. And uh, that's also the thing that for me is super fascinating is a sort of, uh, you know, it's a sort of relationship between the man and the machine. Uh, it's a conversation between the man and the machine. The machine had, has its own rules and acts sort of independently from what you are doing. And uh, you have to interact with it and, you know, being able to create something from this connection between the man and the machine. So, have you ever created a rhythmic feedback loop then use it that to trigger a gate on a synth or a drum machine? Um, yeah, it's possible. Uh, but um, the signal, well, the signal from the no input mixer can be really chaotic. You can create a rhythmical pattern and use it as a gate signal. But, you know, it's kind of, probably you need to use some attenuators uh, to reach the right level because, of course, it's electricity. So you need to, you know, to find the right spot to trigger something that it's based on precise values of electricity. But, but of course, you can create, for example, uh, random gates signals with a no input uh, patch that is rhythmical. That can be done. Of course, totally. Um, yeah, obviously. Uh, well, let's play something just, uh, you know, for the sake of music <laughs> or of noise. <laughs> and of course, if you have any other question, just uh, write them in the chat. <laughs>
So yeah, that was a uh, quick jam uh, with this uh, setup uh, that I created for this live stream. Uh, let me check the, um, the chat, because obviously when I'm playing, I'm not <laughs> looking too much at the chat. Um, thank you, Simon. Yeah, uh, no input kick drum. Uh, I'm... Um, I'm uh, pinging the signal from the um, filter from the sequencer so um, I'm creating this feedback here let me turn down the effects and then I'm sending a gate signal to the filter to create this uh, this kick drum which is not only a kick drum, but it's also uh, a bass, a drone bass at the same time. It's rather interesting in my opinion. And of course, uh, also the signal from the mixer is passing in there. So you can uh, use the internal envelope follower of this filter to modulate the filter with the audio signal that you are sending in. So like, for example, can hear that ping, that sort of high frequencies that I added. You can change in a certain way the sound of the filter with the mixer. A lot of sub basses frequencies here.
and that's an example of what you can do <laughs> with it uh, also um yeah that's that was uh, you know my way of working uh, with the um, with no input uh, sound sources and uh, i hope you find it interesting uh, if you have any other question i'm here uh, again i can stay in live stream for another you know 30 minutes uh, more or less so yeah earthquake yeah sub bases uh, <laughs> are something but also high very high frequencies are something that comes out from this type of stuff <laughs> most of the time <laughs> yeah but we can go with something simple maybe let's try to make a noise a specifically noise type of music with no input mixers they are mostly used for this purpose uh, and for this kind of genre uh, of musical genre but of course as you can hear as you heard uh, before you can also do like techno ish type of stuff uh, uh, there are many 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 different type of uh, outputs <laughs> from this no input uh, type of music because of course this is just uh, a tool a device uh, it's something that you can use uh, to create your own composition and uh, yeah possibilities are endless <laughs> in this sense um so 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 let's yeah let's make some noise some very classic no input noise just because you know that it's there it's something that you can do with it <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
yeah, that was another short example of what you can do with just this uh, rather simple setup. Uh, so playing just one mixer and uh, a filter and uh, phaser. Yeah, mm, I hope uh, this live stream uh, was uh, inspiring in a certain way and also informative. And of course, if you have uh, other questions, just uh, write them in the chat. Or, of course, you can reach me on the Magpie Pirates Discord server in the No Input uh, Compilation channel. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm waiting just, uh, you know, a couple of seconds uh, for... Uh, for other last minute questions and then uh, I'm gonna say bye bye to you all and thank you <laughs> button pressing uh, sounds <laughs> well yeah I don't see any other questions, but of course, if you have some of them, just reach me in the Discord. Um, thanks, everyone. Uh, it was really, really nice, and uh, I'm super happy to be part of this community and uh, to be able to share my knowledge and my experience with this kind of stuff uh, with you all. Oh, Felix, let's go, let's go. Waiting for your question. Obviously, there is the YouTube delay, so I'm reading probably the chat like 30 seconds later from your message. Send. <laughs> Did I come in at the end? Uh, I'm sorry, Stumpin' Evan. Sort of. I can stay in live stream for another 20 minutes, but not no more than that, mm, unfortunately. So if there are many, many questions, I can, you know, try to answer to all of them, but I don't have too much time. Hello, mums. Uh, welcome, welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'm waiting for Felix uh, questions. How do you record this? Sorry, English is not... Oh, no, don't, don't worry. It's not my first one, uh, too. So <laughs> no problem. Um, how do you record this... Well, um, actually, I'm recording it uh, in my computer. So I'm sending all the signal out from this mixer here that you can see here. Uh, and I'm sending the signal to the sound card and I'm recording from there. Um, yeah, that's basically it. super simple. Uh, of course, that's... Um, and there is going to be a VOD also. Yeah, I can... You can record... In this case... Um, there is also the audio from the, you know, the video that it's recorded on YouTube in this moment. Hello, Jem. Hello, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Many people that are coming in uh, right now <laughs> at the end. Well, maybe I can, you know, play something for all the people that are there now. Um... <laughs> But yeah, there are many different ways of recording it, obviously. Mm, I always suggest you to have uh, many different uh, stages when you are working with no, no input mixing techniques or feedback in general. So um, if you work with acoustic feedback, you have to have a dedicated mic to record the acoustic signal, the acoustic environment and what happens in the feedback uh, situation. Um, in electronic feedback creation, I suggest uh, to have uh, at least one stage after the no input. So don't connect your mixer or your feedback sound sources uh, directly to your speakers. Use, for example, a mixer in between or a sound card so you can, you know, turn down the levels from there and uh, you can record something from you know from your mixer with the good levels or from your sound your interface one more quick gem let's make and later <laughs> yeah maybe we can do it 
Yeah, yeah, the VOD obviously is available at the end of this live stream on the Mac Preparates YouTube channel, so you can go back and watch it if you are busy now, obviously. Uh, that's also valid for all the people that uh, cannot attend uh, to today's live stream and that wants to join the No Input uh, compilation, obviously. Can you feedback with a condenser mic? Yes, you can feedback with any mic, basically. You just need to, you know, to be close enough to the sound source uh, that to the not not to the sound source to the speaker that is connected to the mic yeah yeah you can do feedback for for example even with the, something that is uh, for, even with the contact microphones for example uh, a friend of mine francesco who is also in one of the other projects that i'm working on electro electronic uh, for his um, degree in uh, electronic music and composition at the conservatory here in Italy uh, a couple of years ago, he created um, um, a system based on a contact mic and on a transducer, which is like a sort of contact speaker, so something that you put on a surface and uh, resonates with the signal that you send it. Uh, so he created... Um, uh, like this um, this environment for creating feedback into solid objects. So, um, yeah, it basically is he put a transducer on a wood board and put also a contact mic on that wood board and create a feedback between the contact mic and the transducer. So you can basically create feedback with anything. Yeah, contact mics are also very interesting to create feedback. Stomping up. Well, let's make another last um, hello, CDN Collective. Welcome, welcome. Uh, let's make another jam. Of course, we have uh, many, many people that joined in right now. Why the Beast ESP on the side? Ah, the Bitstep Pro here. Uh, I'm using it uh, to... Um, to ping um, this uh, filter here, this um, phaser here, and this filter here. So um, I'm using the gate signal from uh, the sequencer to create the sound from the phaser and the filter. Yeah. Uh, well, maybe I can show you uh, how it works again. Uh, I think it's uh, interesting enough. Um, now I'm pinging uh, the phaser. There is also a delay in here, but this is just the phaser pinged by the bitstep pro. Very liquid and textural sound. If you add uh, a little bit of delay or granular delay, you can create, like for example, in this case. Uh, an interesting texture, interesting sound environment, very bubbly. Yeah, I think it's nice. And then, of course, you can ping the filter. Yeah, you can simply uh, use the, the sequencer and send the gate signal into the input signal of the pedal. It doesn't require any other type of controls. It's just, you know, that uh, pinging that make uh, the, the, the phaser sound uh, in this way, with the resonance at maximum level.
<laughs> Thanks, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, it was really nice. And uh, yeah. <laughs> See you on the Magpie Pirates Discord for the no input compilation and for all the other works that are do that we are doing as a community there because they are all amazing and um, yeah thanks for tuning in if you are, have any other questions just uh, write them there in the no input channel so i can answer you both on a technical level or you know even on a conceptual level about uh, feedback and no input music in general thanks uh, thanks thanks everyone have a nice day take care of yourself stay safe and enjoy your time Bye-bye, everyone.